Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row. Hi, everybody. So today we're going to be doing a review or a blind or something. I don't know. David, what is wrong? I don't have any bourbon to drink. Really? What? I, I just, I don't feel like I have got any new bottles. It's the same old, same old. Has the rain got you down today? Well, I know they were dropping some special bottles. The Virginia ABC dropped some bottles today, but I was working so I couldn't go to the store and get any. So they're all gone. Oh, well. So all that's left at the store is just like run-of-the-mill average stuff. I'm free now. Should we just go get five bottles that we just found at the liquor store today? Yeah, let's go. Hey, so we're back from the store, and that was a fun trip. <laughs> Okay, so... I got rained on. <laughs> David dragged me around to... We ended up having to go to two stores. We were only yes. supposed to go to one. The whole premise of this was supposed to go to one store, pick five bottles from that store, come back, do a blind tasting. Well, when we got I, there... I let you stretch the rules a little bit. Well, the problem was is that the stores are really picked over right now, and there's not a lot. So trying to put together a coherent episode with some kind of a theme was really hard. Well, I noticed that the stores did have certain things but they were all on the very bottom shelf. So let's show you what I got. <laughs> so that, that's what, how we got our idea for the video. So when we talk about like best budget bourbons, we're talking we're talking the best cheap bourbons. We're not even saying budget. This yeah. stuff is cheap. Now we did, it, there is one exception to that. I got one bottle for Jamie, brown sugar bourbon. I'll take that. Thank you very much. Like that cider. The cider uh, donut, the brown, the, the yeah, brown, sugar, brown cider sugar cider from donut. 1911. That's a good, it's a good uh, flavored bourbon. Whoa. It smells like brown sugar. <laughs> <laughs> no surprises there. <laughs> We have a little little nip of that. There's like absolutely no proofy feel. Brown sugar, a little bit of cinnamon. Yeah. I don't like it. Now I got the smallest bottles I could, but I based all of the pricing on the 750 mils. But it's a nice plastic jug. Feel the quality of that plastic, Jamie. Oh yeah. Good it's plastic, plastic jug. But it's old crow. It's like mouthwash. <laughs> yeah. We ended up having to dump that brown sugar bourbon out of Jamie's cup, and <laughs> it was replaced with a Bull Run uh, maple finished. Yes. So it's it's definitely uh, more up her alley. So guaranteed winner. So she can drink that while I talk about this stuff. Aged for a full three years in new charred white oak barrels. This one is Kentucky Gentleman, coming in at 80 proof. Again, this is a 375 mil. I think it was about $7, something like that. It's pretty inexpensive. The Kentucky Gentleman is cheating because it's got natural flavors added. So it's actually technically not supposed to uh, be in this one, but it's very common. I know uh, it's in most stores around the country. So we're gonna go ahead and run with it. But if it comes in first place, it's the natural flavors that won it for it. So we'll call that a, a disqualification, but we'll see how it lines up anyway. Evan Williams Black Label. This was, uh, I believe, $14.99 for a 750. Now I couldn't find anything smaller. I would have grabbed it. So now I'm stuck with an, an Evan Williams Black Label. So we'll see how that does. Uh, it's bourbon, Kentucky bourbon straight whiskey. What else we got, Jamie? Ooh, here's one. I got a Kentucky gentleman, so I had to get a Virginia gentleman to compete with it. So we'll see which state has the better gentleman. The Virginia gentleman is from A. Smith Bowman, 80 proof, and it's distilled and redistilled in Virginia. It's a straight bourbon whiskey. So technically this is actually a Buffalo Trace product. So I'm sure that this is equivalent of like a, a proof down stag or maybe an, an Elmer T. Lee, just in a plastic jug. Ezra Brooks. This was $14.99 as well from Lux Row, coming in at 90 proof. So this is the proofiest beast of the night. I think this is what everybody's been asking for. Affordable, let me find them bourbons. If you're drinking anything, you probably can afford these bottles. What makes a bourbon bottom of the shelf? Like, what are they all? So the bottom of the shelf is reserved for the cheapest stuff. So ultimately okay. it's price that determines the bottom shelf in most stores. And the reason these are cheap is because they're aged a bare minimum of time. Technically to qualify as bourbon, the distilled spirit only has to be in the oak vessel. There's no actual amount of time stipulated. So it could literally dump it in a barrel and then dump it in the bottle in the same day and it would still technically qualify as bourbon. I, I wanted to know because I only buy 
you know, the valuable bourbons. Yes, the f <laughs> Jamie only drinks the finest of flavored whiskeys. <laughs> Maple. I'm kind of nervous about this competition tonight. This <laughs> is the cheapest are. budget stuff. And none of these I've ever had. When we pick the best one, we're going to put it up against like a Wild Turkey 101. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to see how that compares against what would happen if you put down an extra 7 or $8 to get from this level to like a Wild Turkey 101. This has like a very smoky smell. It smells like nothing. This one probably smells the best to me. So I'm gonna try this one. It's not bad. It's easy to drink. A little bit of flavor. I'm not tasting anything sweet. It's more, I wanna say like earthy notes. I would say that's okay. I don't like this one at all. And this just doesn't do it. Like, it's okay. It doesn't do anything for me. I just feel like they're all missing something. So this one's okay. I think this is the one with natural flavors. Since in like some kind of lemony, like fresh lemon. And this one's pretty good. I was telling him, I was like, yeah, I'm going to um, smell them all. And then I'll, the one that I feel like smells the best, I will taste it. But then as I was smelling them all, I'm like, I couldn't really get a strong note out of them. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I guess I have to taste them all. So the, the nose on this is a little bit of a lemon with some caramel, a little bit of vanilla, but kind of a more of a caramel hint of peanut butter, some lemon. That's about it. I've had worse. I know. I I don't know which one this is. I have literally no clue what, it, clue what any of these are, but I will say that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So one of them I hated. The other ones I was like, ah, oh, okay. So it's got a little bit of a green whiskey taste to it for sure. This one could be, it almost has a syrupy sweetness, so it could be the one with natural flavors. It doesn't taste, it tastes way too sweet for something this young to be natural. I almost felt like all of them were missing something though. Like there was nothing that I could grab onto. It was missing something, so. In this price range, a lot of what you're gonna be looking at are stuff that because it's not matured or really crafted or, you know, put a lot of effort into, it ends up having spiky notes. Something's gonna be spiky. But it's also, if somebody gave me this in a glass and I didn't know what I was drinking, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be like, oh my gosh, this is, what is this? Is that a bottom of the shelf bourbon? Right. I mean, I probably would right. be able to tell it's not quality. Like a like it's it's not a, an expensive Buffalo Trace product necessarily or, or a nice, nice rich bourbon. But I also wouldn't, you know, immediately think, you know, floor cleaner. <laughs> In yeah, I've your had, blinds, <laughs> I've had some pretty bad ones. I've so. had some expensive bottles that were way worse than this one. So it does kind of have a little bit of a cleaner smell to it. Beyond that, there's a little hint of a vanilla sweetness. I'm not getting any caramel though. Citrusy cleaner, very mild on that though. It's like, it really is very mild. It's not like, oh my gosh, that's gross. It's just like, there's just a little bit of a, a stringent citrus quality. That one is, is definitely kind of a green whiskey taste. There's a sweetness to it, but it's almost like a candy vanilla sweetness. Hmm. Like, a, like a vanilla chocolate, like a white chocolate covered raisin. See, even kind something gross, you make sound like so appealing. Mm, it's not that appealing. <laughs> now this one, I'm getting a lot more cleaner smell. That smells a lot more like pine saw. Yeah, it's easier to... You pick up that pine note a lot on this one. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of the sweetness. None of these really have much spice to them mm -mm. On, on the nose there or is, palate so far. There is one that I thought smelled very smoky. There's nothing else there. No spiciness, mm -hmm. nothing. There's a lot more spice on the palate on that one. You're getting a little bit of a peanut. It's got a, it's actually got a decent mouthfeel for a $15, $16 bourbon. So this one, I'm getting a little bit more of kind of a fresh hay smell, some light caramel. It's pretty mild on the nose besides that. On the palate, I'm getting a little bit of kind of a peanut shell. It's a good sweetness, good vanilla, good caramel. I'm curious to how many of you all shop from the bottom shell. If you do, leave a comment and tell us which one that you have from yeah. the bottom of the shell. Yeah, if you ended up, if you have multiple bottles of these, post in the comments below what your order is of, of which ones you like the yeah. best. On this last one, I'm getting a little kind of just a neutral alcohol, like a rubbing alcohol smell. And then beyond that, there's like a little bit of a caramel, a little bit of vanilla on the nose, no spice, no proof. On the palate, there's like a weediness to it. It's kind of soft. 
There's a little bit of a spiciness to it too. A little, again, this one has a little bit more kind of a bourbon-y feel to it. So we've gone through them, we've tried them, and uh, when we come back, we'll put them on pedestals. So we're back, we've got the placings, and uh, I don't know which is which, I have no clue. So let's just dive right into it. In fifth place, is this one. In fourth place is this one. Third place goes to this one. Second place right here. First place right down the middle. So how much did you spend on all of those bottles? Not including my bottle. Well, one of them was a, you know, a small bottle. The others are all normal size. Um, I think I ended up spending what, probably 75 bucks. So in fifth place tonight, we have number two. Number two. Go ahead and set it there. The Virginia Gentleman. Little disappointed in that one. I was hoping that was going to be in first place, to be honest. It's sweeter than I would have expected. Now that I've tasted it, I do. it does taste vaguely like Benchmark 8. Benchmark 8 would be essentially the Buffalo Trace direct version of this. This is like Benchmark 8 that's been refinished a little bit or something. I mean, that's kind of how to think of them, so it kind of makes sense. In fourth place, we have Evan Williams. <laughs> I'm going to love it if the flavored one comes first. Third place, we have number one. Oh, is that the flavored one? Kentucky Gentleman came in third place tonight. The flavored one is technically disqualified from the competition, so it's actually last place. In second place, we have number four, Old Crow. That's the one I did not like at all. It kind of reminds me of of a like an old tub. If you are an old tub fan, but you don't want to spend the money on an old tub, drop that, you know, seven, eight dollars, come down, get you an old crow. So just some 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 budgeting <laughs> tips from Whiskey Row here. First place best of the fifteen dollar <laughs> bottles. I I was in the store and I called Jamie. I was like, I got an idea. What if I got all the bottom shelf stuff? And she's like, If you want to. And then I get home and I'm like, Why did I do this? <laughs> so if you're in the market for bottom shelf stuff, now you know that I highly recommend for that category the Ezra Brooks in first place. After tasting all of these, I feel like they're missing something, and I feel like. The bourbons that are a little more expensive, they're more quality. Yeah, you definitely get, I mean. You can definitely see the difference. Now the big question, the question is, is should you drop 15 bucks on this bottle or should you spend an extra, you know, six, seven dollars and get a Wild Turkey 101? So I'm going to pour that in there. I'm gonna put some Wild Turkey in this and see how the Ezra Brooks compares to Wild Turkey 101. Well, how big a difference is it? More proof, richer, sweeter, more spice. Double check. It's, you know, this has a lot more peanut. It doesn't have as much spice either. The Wild Turkey 101, and compared to this group, is is a rock star. First, try some, some Kentucky Gentlemen blended with Virginia Gentlemen. So we've got the two gentlemen sharing a cup. <laughs> so that's, oh. that's a mix of two gentlemen. That is like even like why. Now try Wild Turkey 101. Mm -hmm. You've been sitting here drinking like your favorite maple bourbon, enjoying it. I'm over here working hard, you drinking this stuff, like... and and then you're like, oh, that's just nasty. What's funny about this is this is how I used to feel when I was in Always, the speakeasy yeah. when I'm drinking my mimosa. Yeah, there's no comparison. That's our competition for tonight. We now know that when you want to go to true budget bourbons, the cheap bourbons, the bottom shelf, the cheap stuff, the Ezra Brooks is the the best option. The Ezra Brooks 90 proof is superior to the rest of these there may be other budgets that you love uh not but budget's not even the right word bottom shelf super cheap stuff that you love and that's cool but in my opinion for me the ezra brooks took the night but when i compare this at 15 dollars to this at 22 or 23 dollars it's not a comparison we appreciate you guys hope you enjoyed this video where we found what is the best cheapest bottom shelf bourbon somebody's got to do the research for the whiskey tube community if you end up enjoying the video please smash that like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't about half of you out there that watch our videos do not subscribe it would mean a lot if you did until next Til time next time find a bottle you love <laughs>